three. And hi, welcome to YouTube's Spurs video podcast. I am delighted to have the original Richmond gangster himself, <laughs> Dom. And um, can you believe it, Dom? Hello there, Shoot. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, I'm, you know, I've, I'm wishing I had checked the fine print on uh, quite a few things that I'd um, sent, like my phone and on, on this new laptop. But um, no, I'm all right, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty good. How about you? You enjoying the weekend? I am I mean, indeed. I had a very nervous time yesterday, as I think a uh, few Spurs fans probably had. But uh, we got the three points. We're back in fourth. I know the uh, the red side have uh, their game in hand, but yeah, all things considered, it was a pretty good weekend. As nervous as I was about yesterday, that can't even compare to how honest I think I must have lost about a stone in just nervous sweat from last last you know last Wednesday. I was so I was so terrified they were going to win because Chelsea. I, I remember like back in the nineties, I think Chelsea, Villa, and Forest were the teams that we could never seem to beat. And obviously, obviously, Forest and Forest are no longer hit you know in the Premier League. Villa aren't really the force they were, but Chelsea, no matter how bad they were, we could never seem to beat. Obviously, we weren't great ourselves. I mean, there's this thing going on Spurs Forum about um, the greatest, you know, like pick your Fergie best 11. And if you look at oh, that, yeah, yeah. and you've seen it, and you, if you look at the contrast of like oh, wow, all the players you've left out, and if you look at our like best 11 over the last 20 years, there are so many players. I mean, we. I think we could get an eleven, but my God, that would be an, that would be a real struggle. Over the last even ten years, I would really struggle for us to get an incredible eleven. You know. To be fair, and I did contribute to that very fine uh, thread. I think it was if you are bored, uh, put your best ever Fergie team. So I gave my eleven, and you're right. I, I mean, there are some which you think you know. There's no way you can leave that man out. But then you look at some of the quality on the bench, and you're like, yeah, it is ridiculous. Having said that. I don't think, as Spurs fans, we should be too hard on ourselves. I don't think there is one team in the Premiership uh, that would ever have that kind of quality at that in that kind of depth. Even, you know, dare I say it, your Arsenal's and the uh, Invincible year. Yes, first 11, great. But in terms of an overall squad, Man United really have, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a step or two ahead of, I would say, everyone else, and that includes us. And especially for me, just over 20-odd years, I mean, obviously this is a Spurs video podcast, but... You've got to give credit to Alex Ferguson. He's seen off nearly every rival that he's had. I mean, I think uh, if Mancini does get fired after Wigan lost, you know, after losing to Wigan in the FA Cup final, li literally, he'll have seen off every rival. Wenger was his rival for many years. He managed, obviously, the combination of Chelsea and Man City money have obviously changed things a little bit, but he's been able to see Chelsea off, a bit of Man City off as well. And I just think, got to give credit to the guy. Much like, I much like I disliked him, you yeah. know. Man United, he was incredible. So. I don't think anyone, anyone that is a true football fan can actually sit back and say, uh, you know, too many bad things about him. Yes, there's the, uh, you know, the Fergie time, the extra, you know, six, seven, eight, you name it, minutes after the uh, full-time whistle perhaps should have blown. But no one can argue with that man's achievements. I think, you know, watching Match of the Day yesterday, it did seem quite emotional for the guy. And, you know, I have to take my hat off. I think a number of people have already said it, but I think in our lifetime, in fact, perhaps ever, we will never see the like again. You know, 26 years in the Premiership, never happen again, I don't think. I, I mean, obviously, there'll be Liverpool fans that'll be, they'll be, that'll be, well, they'll be waving their arms up and down consistently, saying, wait a minute. <laughs> but um, no, I just think, I think, because I've got to judge it in my lifetime, I wasn't able to see what Brian Clough really did with Nottingham Forest. I wasn't able to see what Bill Shankly and then Bob Paisley did with Liverpool. So I think about what I've seen in my lifetime. And in my lifetime, and again, over the last, say, 25 years, because for me, that's when, I know football existed long before the Premier League, but that's when football became, it was just everywhere. It was on TV nearly all the time, you know? And especially in the last 10 years of, you know, broadband and everything, you can watch every single game in the world if you want to, you know? And I just think, we live in this era now, and I just think, we well, can watch so many games, and, you know, he, he's been phenomenal. But speaking speaking of well, managers, you know, who who have interesting things to say, Mr. Pardew. Apparently, ah, Mr. Pardew, yes, yes, indeed, the the man who's famously come out with the quote saying that uh, he actually now doesn't care if they lose four 0 to Arsenal, which I think, jesting or not jesting, and I'm sure you know he he, he would have said it tongue in cheek and not perhaps meant it. The fact of the matter remains, he said it. Yeah. And uh, for a Premiership manager, in fact, any professional football manager or, or sports manager to come out and say that, 
it's never going to sit well or very easy with anyone, especially if they're playing, you know, our dreaded rivals for that final Champions League spot. It's 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 a really bad thing for the man to come out and say, jesting or not. Well, that I said. Do you know? Do you remember the whole Gerald Ratner thing? I sell crap. Do you remember that? Back the what? Back, sorry, Gerald Ratner. When he said, when he said, when he said oh yes, yeah, yeah, the. Uh, uh, I joke. can't believe he makes so many profits because uh, actually his products are, are quite crap. I think his share price and indeed the uh, the profitability of his company took a uh, not unexpected nosedive swiftly after. <laughs> and I just remember that. I, that's, that's for me. That's what he found. Because uh, literally anything less than even a draw, yeah, you know, he's going to be up. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, I'm surprised the FA argued because I remember was it was years ago. This is like before the Champions League game with uh, Man City, I think there was a doubt whether Hiro Herrera Gomez would be fit or not. Yeah, there was an injury. And I think one of the Man I think Harry Redknapp had a, had a joke saying, oh, don't worry, I've signed a few goalkeepers. Because I think Man City were able to sign a goalkeeper outside of um, outside of the transfer window because they had a goalkeeping injury crisis or something. I think yeah. you remember that. And they were able to sign some goalkeeper. Uh, I think it was Martin Fulop, who is I think Martin Fulop has probably... I don't know what it is about Spurs players. I mean, Arlen Pardew is a former Spurs player. Martin Fulop is a former Spurs player. And apparently a Spurs fan who have done more to derail Spurs' ambitions to go in the Champions League than anyone else. I, you know, because I remember that disaster against for West Brom last season. Yeah. yeah I hear you. I, I, I remember. It's a weird situation. It's kind of funny season now, at the end of the season though as well, isn't it? Yeah, and the thing, especially like, Villas is both season. Andre Villas both season. It started at Newcastle, and well, obviously, obviously we have to beat Sunderland. That's just you know, and obviously it doesn't obviously it depends what happens between Wigan and Arsenal tomorrow. But ultimately, it could be decided by what happens in Newcastle. It's just so funny that his season began at Newcastle with us, yeah. And his the fate of his season, the fate of our you know of you know of of the next few years to come, I think, will be decided at Newcastle. I just think that's a very odd commentary a little bit, but. I don't know. I mean, when we beat Stoke, I must admit, seeing Charlie get Adam getting sent off, I don't know which was sweeter. See him get sent off or just us winning? Because I... I'm Sorry, say that again? I don't know which was sweeter. Seeing Charlie Adam getting sent off or our <laughs> victory? Uh, oh, come on. It's uh, As much as no one is a fan of Charlie Adam, apart from perhaps his mother... Uh, I don't think anyone would uh, put the two in the same category. We needed that win. It was absolutely essential. If we hadn't, could you imagine how deflated everyone would be even before we know that Wigan are playing Arsenal? Uh, it was nice to see the man go off. When they went down to 10, I thought, if we can't win this, admittedly against Stoke at home, yes, they haven't been as great as, uh, you know, in, in recent seasons. And when I say great, I mean, you know, effective. <laughs> not, not, not that great football, but... The, the victory was all that mattered. We got the three points. It wasn't a, a, a one-man bail wonder show, which made a change. And uh, Adebayor, my God, what's happened to that man? It, it literally is like, you know, someone abducted him for the majority of this season. Uh, I know it's coming to the end. He's in the shot window. But yeah, he didn't do it. Couldn't be that. Oh, but with like, another goal. Could we be so cynical to think, wow. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I'm like, transfer window's coming up. And um, yeah, he's looking to move on. I, just, I must admit, I remember... This is the thing. I, I think you must have something similar as well. Where has Ali Bayo been all season? Where has he been? I mean, I know he had the number three season, and that you could say that was Levy, you know, playing hardball Man City. But ultimately, you know, wages beyond any transfer fee, wages are a huge strain. You know, you can you you can you can amortize transfer fees over a few years, but wages are such a huge strain on you because it's not just the wages, it's the national insurance, all of it. You know. It's like they I think did that, their test was it fifty? Is it, if you want to pay, is it fifteen million to? Is it, do you know that? So if he's if he plays going to Monaco, yeah, you know, fifteen million. But I think someone said that if he's going to Man United, the cost to the club is thirty million a year or something, but just because it, of the wages and taxes, everything else, you know. Exactly, but then Spurs still have a wage structure. I think you know there are rumours that there's a couple of players perhaps that uh, may have sneakily kind of got 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 through that, but not maybe not by much, you know. Our superstar players, you know, if we if we are even wanting to compete for that top four position and challenging for Champions League every year, the wages are obviously going to be an, an issue. You know, the yeah. top stars in Europe, if you if you're going to get a choice, you know, yes, you're you're going to be you're going to be a multi-millionaire regardless. But if you get some a club like Man City, 
uh, that can pay you, you know, three three times, four times what they can pay you at Spurs, they're obviously going to go to Man City. Now, with Adebayor, uh, people seem to forget the guy is a talented player. Yes, he had one or, or two unbelievable seasons. He went to Man City just when Man City was starting to build their superstar squad. The guy has immense talent. The most frustrating thing, and I've tried to give the guy the benefit of the doubt, is that he is, you know, not an enigma. That's too much of a compliment to him. He, he is a frustrating player. He, he's got the ability, but he is just, he seems so lazy, non-committal. And I don't think it's a surprise that it's now the end of the season, the transfer window, uh, you know, open again shortly, that he's starting to perform. And it's, it's, it's not good enough for us. The guy has talent, but the attitude, you know, it negates his talent. And that's a shame. I mean, I, I personally wouldn't be sorry to see... Cause I, this is the thing, and there's something that struck me if you... Um, I don't know if you watched the Spurs show, but they were doing... This is when we were at, I think we were third in the league, and they did a Spurs show uh, special at um, the, the 100 Club. They had Steve Perryman there. And um, obviously, Phil Corn was there. They all wanted him to do the impressions, you know? And yeah. even though I said, like, Harry, do I do... Harry Redknapp, do I do Geordie Pav? They all wanted the impression of uh, Martin Yole. And I always thought that was very interesting. He was a manager like three years prior, you know, from four, five former. Years prior. Former manager, yeah. This is like four years. Ago. This is done in 20, December 2011. And they want a manager, they want the impression of a manager from four years previous. And I just think, much as we liked Harry Redknapp, you know, we, we respected him, but we, we, we were never very fond of him. And I think, Andy Bayo, yeah, I think, forget the Arsenal thing, we kind of respect his ability, but he, we've never really taken him to our I, hearts, I don't I, think. I, I think there's different. Firstly, I'd have to say, if I met Phil Cornwall, there would only be uh, one one impression I'd want him to do, and that is the DJ Dave Clifton from Alan Partridge. <laughs> uh, being such a big fan, with uh, with Martin Yol, perhaps a very close second. And yeah, I listen to uh, the podcast, probably less so these days, but uh, I always quite used to enjoy his, uh, you know, his one day Ramos and his uh, Harry Redknapp's uh, little little bit right at the beginning. Um, in terms of Adebayor, I think, yes, there is the Arsenal thing, but the season we had him on loan, he proved a lot of people wrong. And we actually thought, OK, we can perhaps forgive him his past indiscretions. We sign him on a permanent. But what really is a, a cut price deal for a player? It's a five million, million or something. Five million. You know, we, we five signed him for what, four and a half, five million, six million, whatever it was. Yeah. I'd wait, it was single figures for a player of his ability. That's amazing. We had subsidised wages. The, the problem is, when we signed him on that permanent, he, he was absolutely useless. And it's not just going to the African Cup of Nations. The guy, you know, people used to slate Berbatov for having that lazy kind of attitude, but he'd pop up at least and score the goals. Nothing all game, and then one little bit of Berbatov magic, and he'd score. Without a by all, we haven't even had that. Add that to the sending off against Arsenal, which led to that humiliating defeat, and... Uh, I think the writing was always on the wall. He's had his chances, and I think he's blown them. It's a case of uh, a little bit uh, too little, too late. For me, it wasn't really the the, the, the lack of running. It was just this, the, the control. It's just It just seemed to be like... Because I remember like Michael Dawson, you know that thing they do on Soccer AM, teammates? And they always talk about like who is my skillful player there. Yeah. And you know, basically, Michael Dawson said, without, you know, without hesitation, I, I don't know if Luka Modric had left by then, and he said... Adi Emmanuel Abayo, for a big man, he's got some incredible ball control, <laughs> and I just remember seeing it. I mean, last season we it's saw about something crouchy here scared. or Adebayo. <laughs> yeah, no, for this is for this for Adi, and I was like thinking. I know. And I was like looking, and I'm thinking, and, I, and the thing is, you see it. I mean, that I mean that beautiful little back heel for Siggy. Um, Lovely. Some of the touches and some of the ability he's shown, and you're thinking, I, I'm forget the running and the lack of effort because I always knew that, but. Just a touch. I mean, how on earth can that desert you? I mean, I, I understand you're not willing because if you're injured, you're not willing to run. But sometimes it's the ball. It, honestly, it was like watching. I don't know Ray Shack. Remember him or Ronnie Rosenthal? You know. God, you're bringing you're bringing back painful memories with uh, Ray Shack. Uh, Ronnie Rosenthal. Admittedly, he was rubbish, but you know he scored that wonder hat trick in the cup, and uh, we'll forgive him for being a little bit crap. But I, I agree with you. How can his touch desert him? I, I don't think it can, so I only put it down to attitude. I saw, I saw Adebayor on Football Focus, I think it was last season, uh, where one of the BBC reporters, little video clip of him, you know, in his back garden, he had like suit shoes on or work type shoes on, you know, and he was controlling and, and, you know, playing around with the ball like it was nothing. So the answer, I believe, is the touch doesn't desert him. His confidence, his attitude, all of the above, 
just haven't been apparent. And I think that is the most frustrating thing, is that you know he can do it, he just seems to not perform far too often. And I, th- I think he's actually, you know what, he's, and I think he's actually got the dreaded, well, I don't know if it's, it's, a dreaded, it's a dreaded manager vote of confidence, because right now, Andrew Villas Bosch cannot say enough good things about the guy now. And, and it's as if he's trying to push him out. Do you know, like, when you get some chairman and they're saying, oh, yeah, the manager's safe, the manager's safe, and he's fired a week later. Yeah. I think it's like Andrew Villas Bosch saying wonderful things about Adebayor, this, this, this. But come July, he'll be out the door. Yeah, easily. Uh, do you, I, th- I think it's a bit different from a manager situation. I think it's just, you know, natural kind of sports psychology that our, our good man AVB is using. We've still got one game to play. You know, he has been talking him up. And if Adebayor is a confidence player, I'm not, I'm not convinced it's entirely a confidence thing. I think there's other attributes to his attitude that are lacking. But if he needs to big him up to get him to perform, whether or not he's pushing himself out for a move to another club by performing, I don't really care. As long as he scores, as long as he performs on that pitch and gets us the results we need, I don't really care how it's done. And if it means AVB singing his praises, fair play to him. But you know what, though? I was, this is one thing that I, I take great um, kind of pride from. It's the fact that AVB, this is his debut season, and there's a chance he may actually beat our Premier League record. No matter what happens with Wigan and Newcastle, we, if we beat Sunderland, we get 72 points. And that's our highest ever Premier League points tally, I think. Do you know what? I was that's surprised. I was, I was slightly surprised when I, I knew we were obviously doing well on the points front. I didn't think it would be, you know, equaling potentially our best ever or if we win, it will be our best ever. It, it's incredible. I think, you know, given the losses of, you know, the likes of Modric, Van der Vaart, the retirement of Ledley King, uh, I know uh, our chairman is much maligned on, on the beloved uh, Spurs forum, but, you know, he's got him a couple of players. But, yeah, I agree. They're not of the class. Uh, and they, they're not instant like-for-like replacements for what we've lost, far from it. So for us to achieve that with Levy not buying a striker or two and handicapping the manager somewhat, I do agree with that, it's a remarkable achievement. And here's the thing, it's like one of the players he brought in that, well, I, that I didn't really rate when we signed him, and he's actually come in, I mean, yeah, I mean, throughout the season, he's put a lot of effort in, may not, may not, may not be with the, in the desired achievement, but... I think he scored about six, seven goals this season. He's got quite a few good assists. And I think Clint Dempsey, I'm, I've given him a hard time because I, I don't, obviously he hasn't got that wonderful creative touch of, say, you know, of, of, of a Van der Vaart. Very few players do have that touch, you know. But he's chipped in with some goals. He's shown a lot of effort. Although I think if we are able to get some new strikers in and if we are able to get you know, a couple of good midfielders in next season, then I think... We, I don't think we'll see much more Clint Dempsey, I think. I think he'll be... Because I think Clint Dempsey's one of those players that he's not really a striker, he's not really a winger, he's not really an attacking midfielder. He's like all three of them, you know? He's a real jack-of-all-trades. I, I agree with you, and, and unfortunately, he appears to be a master of none, which may be very harsh. I was actually going to mention uh, Clint Dempsey because, you know, the performances he's put in the last couple of games... He has, but regardless of the slatings that he gets from a lot of Spurs fans, and I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of his. I wasn't a fan when we signed him. I didn't think, and I still don't think he's what we need. Yeah. Hats off to him for actually, you know, getting his head down and putting in. You know, he he scored the other. He, he scored at uh, the weekend. He he had a shot over the bar. It was one of those. Uh, he had one ruled offside. Um, you know, which was a lovely bit of improvisation. He does get himself. I think there's a well-known chap on Spurs forum who says. You know, he gets himself in the positions, and he, and he does. He's not what we need, and it would worry me. I think I heard you say, if we sign a striker, I don't think there can be any ifs and buts. It is imperative that we sign not just one, but two strikers. Daniel Levy, I've supported that guy, but yes, he let Spurs fans down. We, we really could have been out of sight and had Champions League secured by now if it wasn't for our striking options. Yes, there are potentially other areas we can look at, but that was the glaring one. So we have to sign a couple, but as a as a kind of stopgap, I've got to say, fair play to Dempsey. Despite you know not setting the world on fire and being a jack of all trades, he's popped up with some important goals this season. And if he hadn't, I don't know who else perhaps would have been. So I wouldn't necessarily ship him out, but he's a squad player and no more in my eyes. I stopped that guy. I think I'm like obviously I mentioned Ryan Rosenthal. I remember I think we signed him back in '93 when um, Sheridan was injured and. 
we were, we were almost getting relegated because we just couldn't score goals. And we signed Ronnie Rosenthal and he got a couple of goals. But I think it, what it boils down to is that, yes, he was a stopgap, but you're right, we need better quality. Because if you look at our goal difference, we're, we're up there with Chelsea. You know, well, obviously about three points off Chelsea, uh, a couple of, obviously a couple of points ahead of Arsenal. But if you look at their goal difference, their goal difference, obviously they've had some incredible results. Obviously, Arsenal beat Newcastle 7-1 or something. Which, surprised, which, again, makes Alan Pardew's comments, I'm happy to lose 4-0 to them, even more asinine. But um, if you look at their goal differences, if we had even got another four or five goals more this season, turned a couple of draws into victories, we would you know, we would have been at least up there with Chelsea, even challenging up with, say, even Man City. And I know, and if, we can always say if we did this and if that if that goal that hit the post had gone in, this might have been the case. But I, I, I do actually agree the one glaring thing which would have made a difference is signing those strikers. We've been left so short in too many games and it is remarkable that we are where we are. And also, I think I heard you just say that we are two points ahead of Arsenal, which given the fact we have one more game to go, I would say is, uh, again, it, it's a sign that we are, we're fighting for it every season. To me, it's still progress. Yes, we didn't sign those strikers, but all the, all the fans that moan incessantly and are kind of, you know, get Levy out, it's disgusting. You know, to see the progress we've made, if he makes another balls up and doesn't sign a striker, then yes, the argument could be made he's taken his eye off the ball. He, he, this has almost been his one chance, I would say. Yeah. And it is frustrating because we, I, I honestly believe with, with one or two decent strikers signed in January or indeed last summer, you know, we would have third tied up by, by quite some way by now. Well, this, this is the thing that I think, first of all, to sign a top striker, it's, it's going to cost, I don't know, 30... Well, I mean... I mean, obviously, can't you, you, I can't use Van Persie, but let's say Van Persie ended up coming up 29 years old. Well, last year of his contract sold for 25 million, you know? So to buy a striker, it's going to cost at least 30. It's going to cost a huge amount of money. So either you have to basically, you know, really get very lucky and sign a player like, so like Aston Villa that I've done with Benteke, take a risk, sign a player, and hope he comes up trumps. Or well, I'll, I'll let Benteke. <laughs> But do you, do you know what I'm saying? It's a huge risk, though, and I just think... If you look at say, I, I do, do you know what, Shoots? I do agree, and this is what kind of gets me with people that just instantly have a knee-jerk, oh, it must be Levy's fault, and it's an absolute disgrace. Yes, it was a balls-up not to get someone, but are they looking at the bigger picture? Exactly the things that you've just said. You've got to look at the wages. You know, what is feasible to buy? Do we want to take a risk on a striker and... And really, you know, break our transfer record, spending 20, 25 million if we have it. Just, you know, it, it, it's one of those gambles. I don't think it's as black and white as a lot of people seem to make out. You know, it isn't. All those factors you've mentioned have to be taken into consideration. I mean, if you look at, say, look, let's, let's, I hate to mention the A word, but let's, 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 let's look at the South London lot. They, you know, they've had Champions League football every year and every, you know, God, for goodness, how many years. They've been able to, they've been in the Champions League for God knows how many, how many years. They can attract the players. But, you know, they found it very difficult to sign that top talent. You know, they brought in Giroud and Podolski. They must have known Van Persie was leaving and had to sign two players to replace him, really. But, and, you know, they could have gone out and signed more. more I, I mean, players. you mentioned Van Persie, 29, but I think, uh, you know, it, it's, it's almost like a trend that. Clubs shouldn't sign players over a certain age because of sell-on value. At 29, I don't think you've got anything to worry about, well, especially when you know, we he's a finished article. So for, for us, I agree. It is it is a balance between taking a risk like a Benteke or like a you know like that type of player or Michu, but then who knew? So yes, there, there should be questions asked about our scouting network. I, I actually do agree with that. Why why aren't we snapping up any of these players that? break into the first team and, and really make a massive impact. I agree with that, but but yeah, it's not as straightforward as just going, oh yeah, we'll, we'll splash out 40 million on Aguero or whoever it may be, should he have been free at the time. Yeah, and I think it's, and plus, plus our scouts aren't, aren't that discreet because whoever we seem to scout ends up going to Chelsea anyway, so it doesn't really matter who we end up scouting. That is that is a disappointing thing, you know. Oscar Hazard, I, I kind of knew the Hazard one wouldn't come off, but we looked like we could have been in for, for you know uh, Oscar and, and, and a couple of others. I think we could have signed Hazard in January last season, and that would have given us that little bit of that impetus and really pushed on, you know, and made that signing. But we didn't, you know, for some reason, you know, Levy 
quite sensible, quite sensibly. You know, I mean, spending thirty million on a player, you know, we might not have got Champions League, but it's kind of like you have to spec, you know, you have to speculate, take a gamble, and yeah, I'm gonna cite, I'm gonna use the old cliche, Leeds, Portsmouth. You know, I mean, I think we saw. I think did you watch the? I don't know. If, I was actually flicking in between the Spurs game and um, the Watford uh, and Leicester City playoffs. And I didn't, I didn't watch no. And I, I watched some of the highlights of that. And I've seen the highlights. Yeah. And the joy of what? Because I think that is probably. I mean, forget the Champions League final. That playoff final is the most lucrative match to win in in world football. I think I don't know how much how much you, you get like a t- I don't know. It's like the money you, you I think. The money that the champion, that Man United, have got this season for winning the title, that's the money you get if you if you're relegated, if you finish twentieth next season. That is how much money they're just going to be next season. And I just think, you know, the sheer levels of money that are, that are, you know are flying about in football nowadays, it's going to go to salaries. It's going to inf- you know inflate weight. Yeah, I mean, I went to how many? One the, of the, the last game you went to. I mean, I, I was sitting in the north stand. I think I paid forty-five pounds for my ticket, forty odd quid. Someone sorted out for me, and it was a good seat. But my God, forty quid! It wasn't even you know. And I was thinking. I know, but that it, football's been going that way for a long time, and and the people that think you know, oh, we we why why aren't we you know competing right at the top? The fact that we are where we are, and and the progression we've made, you know. I said to a friend uh, yesterday after the game, who is a, an Arsenal fan, uh, there I say it. I went for a. A late sort of Sunday lunch round at some friends as a group of us, and uh, it was quite nice for him not to to be you know talking about St Totteringham's Day as uh, oh, they usually yes. blow you know in the past it's been that's happened in you know April March you know we're in May we have one game to go we're technically ahead of them even though they have a game in hand and it is tough because there's no way we can compete money wise with your Man Cities and your Chelseas and your Man Uniteds so for us to be look at the size of the stadium they get. Was it? Is it fifty six thousand or have how many in their stadium? It's ridiculous. They can, yeah. you know, they can, and even they can't. Even they're struggling to really splash the cash out. I well, exactly. Know they're money they're stadium, so. And that, and that's why I was actually when people are saying Wenger out, you know, he's got them up there again. And I I never had any doubt whatsoever that Arsenal would be there or thereabouts. That they always are. And even with losing Robin van Persie, he seems to make you know a, he's made his mistakes, but he makes some very astute signings. And, and we're in that ballpark. I would say we are on a level playing field with Arsenal right now in terms of what we can do. We've never been a club that's been shy to, to splash the money, not in the league of the Man Cities and Chelsea's. But you look at some of our, uh, yeah, admittedly, some of them have been flops. But we've outspent Arsenal, you know, over the last however many years. Uh, you know, year in, year out. Yes, they spent a bit recently to try and replace uh, RVP and uh, uh, Fabregas. But we have. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm pleased with where we are and I, I'm just holding out that hope that Wigan can do us a favour tomorrow. If they do, then it's all in our hands and we have nothing to fear. However, I, I have a, a terrible feeling there's a Arsenal unfortunately will win and uh, it will all be down to uh, Alan Pardew and his Newcastle side, hopefully not losing 4-0 or even 1-0, but at least getting a draw. Do you know what? I think, do you know what? I must admit, when we... um. Uh, drew up Drew uh, um, Wigan and I felt really guilty because I felt because this is the difference between I think Spurs fans and Arsenal fans and Chelsea fans is that when we win we want to deservedly win when I, I was at a Southampton game and I remember going up to a Southampton fan I said you know what that really sucks for you guys you were the much better side how the hell we won that I have no idea I was almost apologising for winning because <laughs> if you because if you, if you I want to win but I want to deserve the winners I because I the best example I can give, and I'm going to use an MMA, or no, I'm actually not even an MMA reference, uh, submission wrestling reference. Okay, this is how. <laughs> this is there's a guy called Andre Galbao. And oh, looking he, forward to this. <laughs> and he's a he's a world champion in jiu-jitsu, and he's a world champion in both jiu-jitsu with the judo suit on and without the judo suit, which is called like no gi. And I basically, I and mean, he fought a guy um, last year, and the whole idea was that you fight 20 minutes, there's no points, you win by submission, and that's it. There's no points or anything, and I just wrote to I wrote to him and I said, you know, because he because he the match finished in a draw, he couldn't finish off his opponent, but his opponent never once tried. I think a couple of times he made a few attacks, nothing, never once tried. And I just said to him, just I said, you know what, that guy, he was more like Chelsea twenty twelve. You're like Barca twenty eleven or Inter Milan twenty ten. You know, and I said, you're Brazilian, you know what this means? Because 
I used to think if you're going to win, win well. Because you, when you hear Chelsea goes, we're champions of Europe, we're champions of Europe. Yes, you're champions of Europe, technically, yeah. But tell me you deserve to be champions of Europe. Tell me you really deserve that. I don't think you would find a single Chelsea fan that would actually give a monkeys about that. And whilst I agree with you, Spurs have the tradition of, you know, of free-flowing, beautiful, attractive football, which I think became somewhat of a myth over the 90s and the early noughties. We do have that tradition. And yes, we do want to win and we want to win in style. Having said that, I actually think AVB, he's made a change to how we've set up the team. You know, we've come from losing positions before. We haven't played great in a number of games, but we've got some results not playing well. And I'll be honest, yes, we want the free-flowing, buccaneering-style football, and we have been treated to that in recent seasons. As it stands, it's all about Champions League. As sad as it is, it really is. Yeah. And I, I, I will take... Yes, you would rather win convincingly and, and deserve... Well, but I, I will take that last yeah. minute goal and I, I will take whatever we can get to get the points to get us in there and yeah. uh, worry about how we play, uh, hopefully, going forward. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just... Because I'm, I just, I, I just, obviously, the ideal result for us tomorrow would be a Wigan draw. Yeah. That well, you, you, I, I, I know there is this argument about a draw and then teams having something to fight for and, and this, that and the other. I do completely get that. However, as far as I'm concerned, it's a no-brainer for me. I want, uh, I want a Wigan win. I, I don't fully get people that say, I understand it, but I don't agree, I would say, with people that want a draw. I, I I'm all, you know, I want Arsenal to have zero points. I'll be two ahead of them. And uh, go into that final game knowing that, you know, if we win, we're through. Uh, I know we'd get that with a draw, but also, uh, you know, it, it puts extra pressure on Arsenal. I want them to lose. Obviously. I want them to lose because, do you know what? I felt that we didn't deserve to get a draw at, at um, Wigan. I've always been, a, I've always had a lot of respect for Roberto Martinez. And and obviously, I feel bad. I mean, obviously, I don't want Sunderland to get relegated. I feel bad for Sunderland. Ideally, the team I'd like to see get relegated would be Stoke. I can't stand the fuckers, but. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm saying that I don't care if they sue me, screw them. But um, you know, yeah, please don't sue me. <laughs> no, I just, I really, honestly, if 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 if, I, if it had been up to me, teams like Stoke would have got relegated, you know, a long, long time ago. Unfortunately, that's not how the Premiership works. And you know, you got a team like Roberto Martinez who does try and play football the right way, in a decent yeah. manner. Yeah, I'm sure they, you know, and I just felt that I would really, you would want them to stay up. And again, Sunderland, who we played, I think, up at. I'm not. I, I mean, obviously, this under Marcus O'Neill, but the lack of imagination, the lack of any desire or anything, you know, it just. I, I do agree with you, and on, on again on the fabled Spurs forum, there was another thread uh, not so long ago saying, in an ideal world, who would you want in your Premiership? And I agree, there is, there isn't much love for Stoke, and that's mainly how they play. Yes, we would all love to see more creative sides. And also, you know, I, I, I agree, I would like to see sides back that almost have that tradition of being in the top flight that perhaps have fallen slightly, like your Leeds. I know they haven't got uh, a lot of fans out there outside <laughs> of their own fans, but I would. Nottingham Forest, Leeds, it, it's, it's partly tradition, and, and I agree with you on Wigan. They play a hell of a lot better football, and Martinez, you know, sets them up and, and plays a hell of a lot better than Pulis, uh, Tony Pulis would ever do at Stoke. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I agree. And I think, and I, do you know what? I remember watching this. I've, I've, I missed that FA Cup final, and I literally came home. I, I, I was watching the highlights, and I, you know, I thought, oh, you know, because I just got on really late, and I thought, well, I'll put it on. And then I'm like, saying, oh my god, Wigan won this thing! Couldn't believe it. And I'm just like, I'm just flabbergasted. So do you know what? If Wigan, I mean, obviously, I mean, I know it's at neutral ground technically, but Man City fans outnumber the Wigan fans about three to one or something at that, you know, at Wembley, and um, for them to go out and get that victory when the odds were so stacked against them. You know, I would love, you know, obviously not to withstanding my hate for Arsenal, but I know I just would love to see, I mean, I have a lot of respect for Roberto Martinez and seeing him and Wigan stay up. I think, I think that's a good thing about Spurs fans is that we do, we get, if we see, if we see a good team, you know, we actually like them. We say, do you know what? You may be our rivals or, you know, I hate to lose to you, but you know what? If you've beaten us and you've played good football, you know, we don't like to lose, but you know what? We'll hold our hand up. So, you know, the better team won. I think that kind of, I don't know if that's going to hold us back, but if we're too nice, would you reckon? Can you, can you be too nice in football? I think that, that then, then that's more the, the fan tradition. I wouldn't say that's true of every fan. You know, a lot of fans in this modern era 
they're not fussed about saluting the other team. It is all about winning. And I, you know, there's a large part of me that salutes that uh, kind of attitude and winning mentality. But I, I, I do agree with you. The Wigan against Man City uh, win in the FA Cup final was, I, I would argue, bigger than Wimbledon, the crazy gang against Liverpool, uh, yeah. given the, the funds that City have. And it's such a shame. I, I did watch the second half of the FA Cup final, but not the first half. And that, that's kind of unheard of, but it's relegated to a later time slot. Yes, it's been devalued over the years, but the scheduling of it and, you know, having a premiership match on the day, it just takes away from the whole thing. So I think the best thing that could ever happen to the FA Cup was Wigan winning. Yeah. It's injected, you know, if, if Man City had won, it'd be like, oh yeah, we all knew and who cares? It's I could never really call it a tin pot cup, but you know what I mean. It's a yeah. devalued cup and, and X, Y, and Z. So I was delighted, and for uh, that Roberto as well, Definitely. not the other Roberto. Well, I must admit, I'm, I'm one of those people that I liked Roberto Mancini when I used to watch him in Football Italia back in the day in the old cha- days in Channel 4, and I was a huge fan of him at Sampdoria. But when he became Man City manager, it's like, I was like, oh my God, the dude's broke my heart. It's like Zola. I mean, I was a huge fan of Zola when he was at Parma. And when he went to Chelsea, I thought, oh my God, he, he's going to kill us. And he and he often he often did. And yeah, his ability. I mean, it's really good. I mean, also, Zola's probably the only Chelsea player whose hand I'll shake. You know? All the other Chelsea players, I'll give a big wide burst. But Zola's one player who I have a lot of respect for, and I'd happily take a picture with him. I think I think I think you've got to let off Zola, and obviously I've got a Chelsea mate that uh, loves Gus Poyet, and I'm like, whoa, 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 yeah, he was in his prime for you, but he did a great job for us. And I, you know, we've got much love for for Poyet. I know he played for us, but I, I'd say Zola fits into the kind of category where you know it, you you put him aside from a lot of the other Chelsea players, and I agree with you. Uh, Lampard, fair play to the man, and for breaking that record. The rest of them, yeah, I'm agree. A, a nasty team. And I, I would be pretty gutted if I had to follow players of that ilk, to be honest. <laughs> I, honestly, I mean, do you know what? I remember last season when they'd won, I was, in, I was in North London, I saw a guy in a Chelsea shirt, and I'm like, how the hell is there a Chelsea fan in North London? I'd understand it if we were in West London, South West, or, do you know what I mean? Yeah, in your neck of the woods, but it, in North London, of all places, you know what I'm saying? You know the, you know the answer. It's, it's the old, you know... Man United fans travelling up from Surrey to, you know, go and watch their team, perhaps or not, you know, all travelling down. It's it's a money and success thing. It's a bandwagon. Uh, you know, I, I know a couple of Chelsea mates that uh, I, I know more about Chelsea than they do. I, I think I've mentioned this before. If I, if, if I throw out a, an Osgood or even a, a, a Kerry Dixon, they'll, they'll look at me like, who are you talking about? So, so, Kerry Dixon, who is she? Now, I bet you that's what I'm Exactly. Saying. It's, oh, it's okay. embarrassing, and and we'll leave we'll leave them to it. You know, if they want to jump on a bandwagon, then great. But uh, you know, I, I I'm glad that as a child I decided to support Tottenham Hotspur. Yes, it's a rough ride, never an easy game. Much like the uh, you know, the game at the weekend I against Stoke, I was like you know as nervous as hell. But that's part and parcel of being a Spurs fan, I guess. I do you know what I tell you this. I think one of the things that if if we do sort out next season, it's because teams sit deep against us. One of the things I saw against Southampton is that there was seemed to be no organisation, no one like, you know, when we our movement off the ball was terrible, and there was no one you could put on the ball because Huddleston, I mean, forget the set pieces. I think they, that's something they were working on in training oh, that wasn't working. Don't, don't even the start passes, set pieces. <laughs> some of the passes were just absolutely woeful. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, aren't you like meant to be this incredible like Glenn Hoddle style passer who can you know, land a ball on a sixpence kind of thing. Yeah, aren't you that meant to be a kind of, that kind of guy? And I just think that's the, if there's the one thing I would change and beyond, I think, strikers, because if, if, if someone gave me a wish list, someone said to me, you know, Shubes, who, Shubes, who would you like to see us get? And I said, well, obviously strikers, because I think I think JD's 31. I don't see him getting any better. And I, can just, I, I just think we need to start bringing in new players. And so for me, if someone gave me a wish list, I'd say, Benteke, that Son guy from the Hamburg, a South Korean lad, and I don't know, it's maybe another striker if we if we if we get rid of Adi Bayor as well, and I and I think we're replacing Faluka. I mean, one of the guys on um, on YouTube, he actually said, look, he I, I said, Do you know what, I blame Lee for not getting a striker, and he said, Do you know what, I blame so many other things, Lee for not getting a striker, not replacing Luka in time, not getting in good, you know, these players and. But I think we can just get that one player that can split a defense with his passing, you know? Yeah, because no, I, I agree. We, we, 
we we kind of uh, we kind of let ourselves down a bit as a, a club this season when we could have pushed on further than we we kind of have. Yes, we've got a new manager. It isn't just the striker position, and I agree it's tough. But yeah, the replacement for Modric has been a massive miss. And whilst Huddleston, you know, since he kind of came back and people were praising him with a couple of you know substitute performances and 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 doing well. Him, like JD, I don't. I, I think he's been with us long enough for us to know he won't be a replacement. Yes, he can do a job, and you know, take my hat off to the guy for some of those thunderbolts that he scored. But he's never going to be the player that we all, I think, want him to be. As, as sad as I think that is for me to say. I think. I think basically, unfortunately, we have to move on. I mean, I wouldn't. I, and I'm going to say sacrilege. I mean, I do like Michael Dawson. I think he's got these incredible qualities of leadership. Those, I think, you know, the heart and spirit and all that kind of stuff. But I think, I honestly do think that we do need to start bringing in players who are rivals, you know, I think including Liverpool, because Liverpool are going to have that bit between the two. Because I said at the beginning, I said I said to anyone that would listen, I said, you know what, if we can't, in, 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 this, in, the, in January, we should look to try and bring in Daniel Sturridge. I think he's he's got the right height, he's quick enough, you know, I think he can do a job for us. And I was like, oh no, he's shit, he's, you know, he's this, he's that. He's obviously shit. He scored a hat against Fulham. That's none of our strikers have managed that. You know, he scored. He's, he's been doing pretty well, I think, for Liverpool. He scored about I think like ten goals already for them. Well, we we could have done with a hat trick against Fulham as well, to be fair. But I, I agree. It, it's not just uh, you know Sturridge. People are far too quick to go. Yeah, he's rubbish or he's great. You know, instantly. It's a very kind of you know. Uh, it, the nature of a football fan. I, I hate to use the word so much, but it it, it is fickle and. Yeah. Sturridge would have been a gamble, but I agree. He had all the attributes we want. I think he's a he's a pretty damn good player, and uh, he seems to be proving it. But there are, there are a number of players out there that we could be looking at to improve, and and that's what we need to do. Not kind of get players that are adequate and can and can do a job in the squad. We need players that in the first team can make that big a difference and and do it regularly. Definitely. Speaking of things that make a difference, uh, Dom, do you know the as I told you about the coaching horses this Saturday, this Sunday, sorry. The bar, you know, the coach host barbecue, the non-Spurs uh, forum meetup. Oh, I, yes, I recall you mentioning this. This, this, this could be controversial. <laughs> this could be controversial, but you know what I'm going to say? I've, I, so aside from your wonderful self and obviously people like Jez and Peter and the guys, you know, you know, on Spurs forum, on Spurs forum, I've met a whole bunch of lovely, really wonderful people from Spurs Odyssey, which is a rival message board. But they're honestly, they are so nice. And do you know what they do? They do Spurs meet. But guess what? If it's a home game, they do a Spurs meet, incredibly, in Tottenham. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just remarkable. I'm like, hmm, where should we do a Spurs meet for a Spurs home game? Should we do it in Liverpool Street and then worry about getting to Liverpool, you know, to Spurs on time? Or should we just meet up in Tottenham and go to a pub or one of the many pubs and cafes they've got in the area? Hmm. I, I don't get me wrong. I do. I know this is a, a particular issue that you feel, and I, I completely get where you're coming from. Um, but you know, I guess if people aren't going to the game, then sometimes you could get. I, I see the other argument as well, but I take your point. I'll, I'll probably uh, diplomatically sit on the fence on that one. Oh, that could be quite painful. But I'll, I'll let you know. But I'm definitely going to be at the coaching horses. Uh, this Sunday, and if like um, I think you, if those of you saw my YouTube of Eggsy live last year, and that was actually really fun. That was it was, it was in Randolph, Randolph. It was in the back pub, the 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 garden of Randolph's or Rudolph's, the pub in um, right near the right right near the stadium. Yeah, that is a god awful pub, by the way. Honestly, <laughs> that is honestly. If you, if you go into that disc, they, they they got this little little weird little, little, little mini disco. It looks like something out of the out of the 80s or something. It's something, oh my god! It's oh, it's it's like it looks, it looks like something out of Only Fools and Horses. Honestly, <laughs> that that is that is honestly that's the first thing. I, do you know what? Now I know why I really disliked it because it did look like a disco they have in Only Fools and Horses. Honestly, that's what it honestly did look like. It actually looked like a disco, not a club, a disco. That's how. Like, so, I, I don't it. think you could have sold it any better. <laughs> but definitely, I'm going to be going to the coaching horses. The, this Sunday for the barbecue, and if you YouTubers want to be there, I want to be on YouTube. Who knows? I hopefully I'll even have my camera phone back by then, and you can join Eggsy, the incredible Don Perignon himself, and a few others uh, that have, that have. Honestly, I feel blessed that when I started doing YouTube, I just did it when I was because I was bored. The fact that some people like yourself, Dom, Jez, you know, the, you know, my mate Kevin G, 
have actually decided to be on YouTube and honour YouTubes. Honestly, I'm so touched that you guys, you know, choose to do that. I'm really, honestly, touched by that. Jubes, you don't need to thank uh, me. I can't speak for the other contributors, but uh, it's it's an honour and a pleasure, sir. And uh, keep up your good YouTube work, I say. So starting starting eleven for this um, this uh, this this Sunday. Who would who I, I'm who, would you what do you think about Benny? I mean, he doesn't seem to like Benny for some reason. Can you could you get that at all? I don't get that. He doesn't, and and to be fair. Uh, uh, Benny hasn't really performed amazingly well this season. It hasn't been his best season. He's had some dire performances, but I think people forget again, he's been out for a fair amount of time. We've had Vertonghen in his place. And as a servant over the years, he's done well. But I, I can see, as you say, that ADV doesn't seem to rate him. I can understand that. You know, I, I'm not a, a massive, massive fan, but I am a fan of uh, Benny's. And I think the fact that Rose, despite uh, apparently some uh, slightly silly uh, remark on Twitter today about uh, coming back to warm the bench, you know, the fact that Sunderland fans are raving about him and he's in certain people's, you know, uh, not team team of the year, but, you know, most improved team of the year, as it were, in, in his yeah. position, means that we should look at him and we shouldn't dismiss the fact that he's on our books and ship him out just because he's only performed at Sunderland. People seem to forget that he's only performed uh, for, for Sunderland against uh, every team in the Premiership. So, uh, well, Carl yeah, Walker uh, only performed for Aston Villa. You know what I mean? Aston Villa won exactly the best. Exactly. Side. The argument doesn't always, you know, hold weight. I, I, I see the argument both ways. But I think the fact that we have Rose coming back means that competition is great. I, I personally wouldn't ship uh, Benny out, but uh, I, I would, you know, I would still start with him uh, in our final game. Yeah, and I'd, I'm gonna, I'm go, I'd probably go... Uh, Carl Walker and Benny on, 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 as fullbacks. I'd actually drop Hudson and put Dembele in with um, Parker if Dembele's fully fit. Agreed. It was I, I. I was close to thinking, you know, potentially that there, there, there could be an argument. I haven't been a fan of Huddleston uh, in the last couple of games, but there's an argument, of course, that Dembele and him play better, and uh, then Parker and Dembele. But I, I would actually think for experience and for. Hopefully, someone that will literally give his all for the cause and you know all that that you know blood, sweat, and tears. I agree with you. I'd go with Parker and Dembele. The only thing that makes me think maybe not to go for Dembele and Parker is that apparently Sunderland had no creative at anything last Saturday, and I think is it Sessignon? He's suspended, I think, for three or four games or something. So maybe you could get away with just playing those Dembele and Huddleston. You know, you might be able to get away because. They haven't got anything, anyone really that creatively dangerous. I, I would start with Parker and Dembele. I'd have uh, Huddleston on the bench, and if it's not working, and if you know we need to be going for that win, depending on uh, how other results are, I, I think we have to go for that win regardless. To be fair, uh, then you know I'd say have Huddleston on the bench. Definitely, yeah, I, I think yeah, I concur with that. And um, I think you know Lennon, Bale, and Clint Dempsey, and Adibayo up front really, and. I, I would I would actually say, yeah, Adebayo has to start. The guy has uh, finally hit a little bit of form. The goal against Chelsea was just remarkable. Took the line, wasn't it? His goal, uh, you know, uh, yesterday was, was a tap-in, but he needed to be in that position. We have to start with Adebayo. As much as I'm not a big fan of Dempsey, he has been getting himself in, you know, some decent positions, and he's been slotting in. So there is, you know, the argument for him. I'd say the rest of the team pretty much picks itself, to be fair, with, uh, you know, the, even the centre-backs, uh, Vertonghen and, and Dawson, I think it has to be. And who would your player of the season be? Because who, if you had a player of the season, who would your player of the season be? Who would my player of the season be for Spurs? Yeah, because yeah, obviously we we're coming up to that time where I, I think our player of the season, I'm, yeah, who would, who would your I, player I, I don't, I don't think, given the fact that he's already laden down with the official awards, not just to Spurs, but for the whole of the Premiership, and even if that wasn't the case, for me, it, there, there's only one player that it ever could be in terms of player of the season, and that, my friend, is uh, Gareth Bale. And, and his armbar. <laughs> and indeed his armbar. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be controversial. I'm going to go with Jan Vertonghen. He, for I, me, has been my player if, of the season. If we, if we had a whole host of awards and, and the award was for uh, best signing, I'm a... Best, mass debut, uh, best debut person. Yeah, best season debut, yeah. Their seasonal debut, I'm a massive fan of Dembele, but yet he hasn't always turned it on. I think this is a, a settling in season for him, but the guy has huge talent. Uh, and even though I'm a fan of his, yeah, I agree. That would, that would go to the Tongan. But 
just because, you know, he's been very, very impressive, uh, you know, over the course of the season, it still doesn't mean that Bale shouldn't win because oh, no. he, Bale, 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 Bale's a three mile, he, 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 he would get it. But you know what worries me is that because a lot of the, because a lot, you know, a lot of the in, you know, message boards and sites, you know, they do their player of the season and give them the awards. And every player they've given player the awards to, they, they either have like a massive loss of form or they get in a massive injury or they end up leaving. So I'm just, honestly, because I, I, I did this thing on Spurs from today. Someone actually wrote the official Wigan versus Arsenal friend. I was like, oh, no, 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 dude, you can't do it. It's got to be Jez that does it. Because because all the ones he's done are the ones that we've got the results that we wanted when he's done. Uh, I saw that. You said something like, that. you know, if everything is to be right in the universe, don't it has to be universe, a bro, proxy seriously. that does it. But, universe, bro. but, but well, it's not even a Spurs thread. It's a, it's a Wigan Arsenal. So I, I think I've said before, I'm not a big believer in the fate or any of that. Yeah, I know people, you know, put on their lucky sock on match day and stuff like that. But, uh, for me, Wigan Arsenal, yeah, don't get me wrong, Foxy's done a tremendous job, but uh, ultimately, it doesn't matter. I don't care who does it, as long as the result happens. Well, you know, if, happen, if that's happen, fate, then so be it. <laughs> I think whatever happens will happen, but um, no, it's going to be, do you know what, this has been a great season. I mean, yes, it didn't go that great with obviously you know, the Europa League, but for me, the way I look at it, we, we, you know, we played Lyon, we played Inter Milan, two Champions League quality sides. And if you think about it, we've actually played in, in all the in all the knockout phases. We played the home leg first, which is always a, which is never really an advantage if you think about it. It's never yeah, a, I, I, I agree. And people mo people are always going to moan, you know. And it's not just Spurs fans; it's whichever team you support. If you look at it in context and look at it in perspective, yes, we've uh, we've already talked about you know not signing our strikers, etc. But putting that to one side. Again, it's remarkable, and, and it's so nice to be playing teams, like you say, like Inter. Uh, how do we do against them again? Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we bad in 3-0, and then we bent over 4-1 for them. It, it, exactly. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, we're, we're loving it. Yeah, we don't want to be in Europa. We want to be in Champions League. But overall, the fact that there's no St. Sutteringham's Day still, and there's only one game to play for us, and also the fact that we, we sit in third with one game to play at this stage of the season, you know, overall, yes, maybe people can say ADB has overachieved, but yeah, overall, we've consistently been fighting for top four for about the last three or four seasons. So I think, you know, credit needs to be given where it's, where it's due. Yeah, I'll, I'll give credit to Harry Redknapp. I'll give credit to Levy because he actually has spent money on bringing players in. And you know what? I'll give credit to ADB. And do you know what? Uh, as I, I, I generally always say, come on, you Spurs. But in this case, I'm going to say, come on, Wigan. Do your job. <laughs> Beat the crap out of those goons. Uh, I'll take the draw, but yeah, please win. <laughs> please win. Dom, thank you so, so much. This is probably going to be, assuming I don't do a YouTube uh, at the Coaching Horses barbecue, I think about 6 to 5 to 5.30. I think, you know, the, obviously this is a free sponsor plug for Coaching Horses Club in um, Tottenham. But no, um, if, but this is probably going to be the last YouTube's of the season. I don't, unless there's a demand for it. I don't think I'll be doing any, any, you know, in in the post season. I don't think I'll be doing any YouTube's in the post season. I won't be doing like what I think of the season that's gone because, you know, if people want to know, they can always go back to the old YouTube's how I feel about those games. You know, I think those are most. You know, you've surely got to do a, a final end of season roundup. You know, a, a final send off for YouTube's reflecting on the season once. All is said and done, and that fat lady has sung. Do you know what? If I can get, if I can, if I can, get, if I can guarantee myself some Dom Perignon, then who knows? I, I, I'm in. Take take that as read, my friend. A, a season review, YouTube's. I think you know the uh, the fans will be crying out for it, YouTube's. Well, tell you what though. How about how? Tell you what. We'll add some extra spice to this. I did this thing with Jez, and I'm gonna ask if you can do this as well. Uh, think of your ultimate Spurs eleven, okay? But uh, but two. You but you're allowed two though. You're allowed a Spurs eleven of the best players ever, and a Spurs eleven of the players that you've seen play, whether live or on, on you know, on you know, or you know, however you've seen it, uh, you know. And if you got to you know, you know, for for, for our um, end of season, if you can you know, yeah, if you can come up with one of those, John, I'll be absolutely grateful, and I'll, and I'll come up with my um best ever Spurs eleven that I've seen, and and the Spurs eleven ultimate. If I ever got married, honestly. Honestly, and obviously Dom would be at my wedding, you know. Dom, you know, there'll be the Dom Perignon would be flowing, you know. But I'd, I'd actually, honestly, I'd actually have tables. I'd have one table, and I, I, you know, I'm sure I'll call the Blanche Flower table. Do you know what I mean? That that would be my table, you know. 
I have been to a wedding where uh, sort of similar has occurred. You all, you always have those things, but yeah, take it as read. Should you do your uh, review of the season, I, I can certainly come up with those two teams. Not a problem. Well, thank you very much, Dom. And I, again, if you know, you know, so, so we will. There will be. I'm, you know, I can imagine Paxo probably choking right now. But um, yes, they, they, they probably will be uh, a YouTube end of the season review, but. Um, definitely thank you to everyone that's been listening to this and watching this and I really thank you I, I honestly I'm I, I'm surprised anyone chooses to listen but they do and um, honestly I'm very very grateful so as always come on you Spurs but in this case come on Wigan come on Wigan and thank you again Dom I really appreciate it buddy until next time next time <laughs>